All right, so we just talked about AWS regions. Now let's talk about uh, how that affects our services versus regional and global services. So regional services are scoped based on what is set in the AWS Management Console on the selected region. So you have this drop down, and that's what you'll do. You'll say, okay, I want to have resources in Canada or in Europe. Uh, so this will determine where a native service will be launched and what will be seen within the AWS Services Console. You generally don't explicitly set the region for a service at the time of creation. I explicitly mention this because when you use something like GCP or Azure, uh, when you create the resource, that's when you select the region. But AWS is it has this kind of global thing, which is unique to their platform. Um, then there's the concept of global services. So some AWS services operate across multiple regions and the region will be fixed to the word global. And for these, that's services like S3, CloudFront, Rev 53, IAM. So the idea is if you were to go over to CloudFront and go into the CloudFront console, you'll notice that it will just say global and you can't switch out of that. Uh, for these global services um, at the time of creation, it's a bit different. So we were saying up here for regional ones that you don't select the region. But when you are creating global services, if you're using something like IAM, there is no concept of region because they're just globally available. So you don't have to determine a subset of regions. If you're using S3 Bucket, that has to be in one region. So you actually do have to select a region at time of creation. Um, and then there's something like CloudFront distributions where you are choosing a group of regions. So you either say all of the world or only North America, which is more like geographic distribution. So you don't say the region in particular. But you know, hopefully that gives you a distinction between regional services and global services.